and welcome to my new SQL Server Quickie. Over the next few SQL Server Quickies, I want to cover the various pessimistic and optimistic transaction isolation levels that SQL Server offers you. Today, we will start with the isolation level read committed. This is the default isolation level in SQL Server when you don't specify any other isolation level in your transactions. Let's switch now over to the flip chart where I want to describe this isolation level to you in more detail. Before I talk about the specifics about the isolation level read committed, I want to give you a brief overview about isolation levels in SQL Server. In general, when we look on a relational database, we have two activities that we have to synchronize against each other. We have so-called readers and we have so-called writers. In the context of SQL Server, a reader is a select statement which reads data, a writer is a data modification statement like an insert, update, delete that changes our data within our database. A reader in SQL Server by default always acquires a so-called shared log means when you read a record you acquire a shared log or a so-called s log on that specific record when we change records sql server acquires a so-called exclusive log and x log on that specific record and both logs are just incompatible to each other means when you have acquired a shared log on a record, you can't concurrently change that record. When you are changing a record and you have acquired the exclusive log, you can't read that record at the same point in time. And a writer also blocks a writer. Means as soon as an exclusive log is involved, you have a blocking situation in SQL Server. And when we now work with the various isolation levels in SQL Server, we just specify with the chosen isolation level how long readers are holding their shared logs. We have no control, no influence over the writers. We can only control with the isolation level how long a reader, a select statement, is holding its shared logs. Let's move now on to the isolation level read committed, which is the default isolation level in SQL Server. Imagine we have a table with three records and we read from that table. By default, in read committed, SQL Server acquires a shared log on that first record that we are reading. When we have read that record, SQL Server releases the shared log. Then we move on to the second record, we acquire a shared log. When we have processed that record, we release the shared log and the same thing happens with the third record where we also acquire and finally release the shared log. The problem that we have with the isolation level read committed is that we don't have a so-called read stability. Read stability means when you're reading these records multiple times within your transaction, you would get back the same information. So every record just looks the same as you have seen that record previously. By default, in the isolation level read committed, we have no read stability. In my next SQL Server Quickie, I will talk about the isolation level repeatable read. And here you will see how SQL Server can achieve a read stability with the isolation level repeatable read. Let's switch now over to SQL Server Management Studio and I want to show you how easy it is to get into a blocking situation between a select statement and an update statement with the default isolation level of read committed. In this demonstration, I want to show you the basics behind the isolation level read committed and how easy it is to get into a blocking situation. I have here three different sessions in front of me. The first session performs a data modification against the table person.person. .person. The second session tries to read from that table. And finally, I will use the third session to show you how you can troubleshoot a blocking situation in SQL Server. Let's start with the first step, our data modification, 
where I just update a specific record in the table person.person. .person. I also start an explicit transaction here and as you can see the transaction is not yet committed. So we just have a pending transaction. When we now try to read from the second session, you can see that the select statement is really slow. In our case, we have now a simple blocking scenario because you can't acquire the shared lock on this record because the first session has already acquired an incompatible exclusive lock. The writer, the update statement, blocks the reader, the select statement. The SELECT statement will just wait indefinitely until the shared lock can be acquired. You can now troubleshoot that blocking situation very easily with some dynamic management views in SQL Server. You can look for example into the lock manager by using the DMV system to unlocks. Every record that is returned from this DMV is one lock that is currently stored in the hash table of the lock manager. When we restrict here on both session IDs, you can see now that our second session waits on a shared lock. The column resource associated entity ID returns you the ID of the allocation unit. With that ID and some other system views, it is very easy to find out on which table or index the blocking situation happened. And the column resource description tells you the hash value of the key value on which the lock was placed. In addition, you can use the DMV SysTM always waiting tasks to get more information about the blocked session. As you can see from the output, the second session waits on the wait type lock mode shared and that this session is blocked by the first session. With that DMV it is very easy to find out who is your head blocker. In our case it is the first session. When we go now back to the first session and finally end our transaction, that session will release the exclusive lock on the record and therefore the second session can acquire the shared lock for reading the record. The reading of the record in the second session took a considerable time. When you now rerun the SELECT statement without hitting any blocking situation, it is very fast. That's the problem of locking and blocking. Sometimes your statements are very very fast and sometimes they are just slow. In today's SQL Server Quickie, I have given you a general introduction to the concept of the isolation levels and how the isolation level read committed works in SQL Server. As you have seen on the flip chart, you only acquire a shared log during the reading phase of your records. As soon as the record is processed, the shared log is released. Therefore, you have no so-called read stability. When you read your records multiple times within your transaction, you can get back different versions. In the next SQL Server Quickie, I will introduce the isolation level repeatable read to you, which deals with this specific problem. Stay tuned.